The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning to you. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Chris Farden in for Alex, uh, who has the day off. Begin with the news around the nation. This morning, federal officials are investigating a horrific discovery inside a hot semi-trailer in San Antonio, Texas. At least 46 migrants are dead in what officials say appears to be a failed smuggling attempt. According to authorities, 16 people were also found alive, four of them children. They were all taken to a hospital for treatment of heat-related illness. Temperatures in San Antonio yesterday were in the triple digits. Patients that we saw were hot to the touch. They were suffering uh, from heat stroke, heat exhaustion, uh, no signs of water in the vehicle. It was a refrigerated tractor trailer, but there was no uh, visible working AC unit on that rig. Police say the migrants were discovered when someone working nearby heard cries for help. The victims were men and women, most of them young adults. Three people were taken into custody. Homeland Security investigations has taken over. The heat is likely to be a focus of that investigation. Temperatures climbed to 101 Monday, according to the National Weather Service. The heat inside the trailer packed with people was likely to have been significantly higher than the outside temperature. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg said the 46 who died had families who were likely trying to find a better life. So the plight of migrants seeking refuge is always a humanitarian crisis, but tonight we are dealing with a horrific human tragedy. So I would urge you all to think compassionately and pray for the deceased, the ailing, the families, and we hope that those responsible for putting these people in such humane conditions are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. This morning, today's Morgan Chesky will be live on the ground from San Antonio, sharing the latest on the survivors' conditions as federal law enforcement moves to investigate the alleged human smuggling event. 504 your time now and back here at home to one of our signature issues here at KGET, pedestrian safety. A pedestrian was hit and killed in Oildale last night. It happened just before 9 p.m. on North Chester Avenue near Decatur Street. The driver tells the highway patrol the victim, a woman, walked in front of his SUV and he was unable to stop. Life-saving measures were performed, but the woman died at the scene. She was not in the crosswalk. And a head-on crash on Stockdale Highway sent two people to the hospital with major injuries. The accident happened around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon east of Highway 43. According to the CHP, a driver headed east on Stockdale Highway made a U-turn into the path of a pickup truck headed west. The pickup's driver swerved, then lost control and ended up in the other lane, where it was hit head-on by a third vehicle. The drivers of those vehicles, a man and a woman, suffered major injuries. CHP says the driver suspected of causing the crash stayed at the scene and is cooperating in the investigation. 5.05 is your time now, and in your 17 Crime Watch, classes will resume at Bakersfield College this morning after a bomb threat forced a campus-wide evacuation yesterday. An emergency alert went out to students and staff just before 2 p.m., notifying them that the college's Panorama campus had received a bomb threat and the campus was being evacuated. A full campus search by the Bakersfield Police Department found the threat to be unsubstantiated. Classes scheduled for yesterday were canceled, but it's back to normal schedule today. No word yet on any arrests. And the Kern County Sheriff's Office is looking into the discovery of a pill inside a burrito from a Del Taco restaurant on Merle Haggard Drive. The man who found the pill tells 17 News he believes it was fentanyl, a deadly synthetic opioid. But that has yet to be confirmed by law enforcement. KCSO says medical aid responded to the customer's home since the pill was discovered after he bit into the burrito, but he was medically cleared. The pill will be submitted to the Kern County Crime Lab for testing. Del Taco released a statement late yesterday saying they're aware of the situation and are actively investigating the claim, adding the fast food chain has not been contacted by authorities regarding the issue. Well, as the temperature climbs, families across Kern County flock to pools and other local swimming holes, but a day at the pool too often turns deadly. Kern County sees about five drownings every year. 
Kern County Public Health emphasizes the importance of watching kids around water. It can happen in minutes. From a raging river to a bathtub, a child can fall under the water and never come up. If you don't see it happen, you might not know until it's too late. Most people don't realize that when children drown, it's silent. They don't make noise. Uh, they don't splash. They go underwater and they just don't come up. The CDC reports drowning is the number one cause of unintentional injury death for children under four. Three children have drowned in Kern County already this year. Kern County Public Health Program Manager Jeff Ferris says there's one incredibly simple solution. It's imperative that somebody is always watching children. Kern Public Health's Water Watchers Program designates one person at a time to focus on the kids. To prevent drownings, Ferris says, you don't have to be medically trained or have extensive training of any kind. You just need to make sure your eyes don't leave the children. They put the lanyard around their neck with the whistle, and it's their job for 15 minutes to do nothing but watch the children. The program also advocates for preventative measures, like fences around home pools, swim lessons for kids, and learning CPR. But at its core, Water Watchers is a whistle, a lanyard, a pair of eyes, and focus. It's free. It doesn't cost anybody any money. All you need is uh, the lanyard. You just need a whistle so that if something happens, you can start notifying immediately everybody there that help is needed. To learn more about Water Watchers, head to kernpublichealth.com slash waterwatchers. 509 now, 4th of July is next week, and local fire officials already have their hands full with the illegal fireworks lighting up the night sky. Kern County Fire recommends you make plans to go to events set up by specialists this Independence Day rather than have your own show. But if you choose to perform your own pyrotechnic spectacle, make sure to buy safe and sane fireworks. If you're not sure, look for the seal. Any firework you see leaving the ground is not a safe and sane firework. Using illegal fireworks, including out of the prescribed time for your area, could come with a hefty fine. Kern County Fire will be using drones to help them catch those using illegal fireworks. Your time now 532 and this morning county supervisors are expected to decide whether, a, whether to place a one cent sales tax increase measure on the November ballot. 17's Marco Torres breaks down where the money would go if it's passed by voters. This new tax proposal would only affect those who live in unincorporated parts of the county. These are areas outside city limits like Oildale. But this will only happen if the supervisors approve putting the measure on the ballot in tomorrow's vote. This is a critical time. I uh, beg my colleagues to please step up uh, and help this community uh, reach our goals of a rising tide lifting all boats. The proposal needs four out of the five supervisors to pass and be put on November's ballot. Multiple community members stepped up last Tuesday to share their financial need. The Sheriff's Office currently has 125 vacant deputy positions, 122 vacant detention deputy positions, and 111 vacant non-sworn positions. And these numbers are growing on a weekly basis. If passed, the one cent tax will increase sales from 7.25% to 8.25% for transactions in unincorporated areas. If the tax increase passes, the tax money is intended to be allocated to vital services like law enforcement, emergency medical response, and general government use. However, 2nd District Supervisor Zach Scrivener says the timing for this proposal is a big issue. These thoughts mirroring many from our community. I just don't know what to think anymore. It's just overwhelming. It's a sad thing because people are barely making it, you know. And with, first of all, the gas prices are insane, but the food, people have to eat. Well, it's going to be a hit to all of our pocketbooks, just like with gas is right now, as long as they do accountability of where the money is actually going, because I feel like sometimes money says it's going one place, and sometimes a lot of hands get involved with it. So we'd like to actually make sure it goes to where it's supposed to be. It would be great. That was 17's Marco Torres reporting. Now to news around the state. California lawmakers began formal hearings Monday on the state's $307 billion budget plan. That was finalized by Democratic leaders Sunday night. The budget includes a $17 billion relief package in response to rising gas prices and inflation, part of which would provide refunds back to taxpayers. Governor Gavin Newsom's administration says payments will begin going out in October. The payments will be based on income and would be between $200 to $350. 
here at the end of the day we're we're helping families across the state of california have relief whether they drive a car or not they can use that money to cover any kind of expense the relief package also includes a pause on the state's 23 cent per gallon sales tax on diesel fuel for a year. Republicans questioned why pause that tax and not the state's 51 cent gas tax, which will increase another three cents Friday. Uh, right now, Californians uh, are, are frustrated. They're, they're growing weary, um, and, and this process unfortunately adds to this growing frustration. Lawmakers are poised to pass the plan on Thursday. Making news around the nation this morning, a monumental Supreme Court term is coming to an end. The court ruled Monday on an important religious speech case as fallout from Friday's abortion ruling continues. Abortion rights supporters are scrambling to protect access to the procedure. NBC's Chris Pallone has more. With President Biden in Europe, members of his administration insist they're still working to protect access to abortion in the wake of Friday's landmark Supreme Court decision. We're going to continue to do everything we can to make sure you receive the care you need. Right now, abortion is illegal with few exceptions in at least seven states and soon at least six more are also expected to ban it. The administration dismissing for now an idea to provide abortion services on federal land but says states should not interfere with abortion pills sent through the mail. We will do everything everything within our power as an administration through the executive branch to ensure that women have access to the medication they need. Abortion rights groups have filed lawsuits against trigger laws in at least eight states. Judges in Louisiana and Utah have temporarily blocked new abortion laws from taking effect. And while the latest polling shows 56 percent of Americans say they oppose the Supreme Court's decision, Republicans are celebrating the ruling. What the court did in effect was return this very controversial issue to the people and their representatives. With a consequential term now drawing to a close, the Supreme Court's conservative majority Monday expanded religious rights. I'm still in shock. I mean, it's just great news for the entire nation. Amen. Ruling in favor of a Washington high school football coach that his public prayers on the 50-yard line after games are protected by the First Amendment. With angry protests in the streets and polls showing most Americans are against overturning Roe, Democrats hope that drives them to election victories during the midterms this fall. But Republicans point out that their voters are motivated by these issues as well. In Washington, Chris Pallone, NBC News. CVS says it's limiting the number of Plan B pills that people can buy on its website. The company says the move is to ensure equitable access and consistent supply on store shelves. Days following the Supreme Court's decision on Roe v. Wade, many took to social media urging people to stock up on contraceptive pills. Over the weekend, CVS Health began limiting purchases of the drug to three per order. The emergency contraceptive pills can be purchased over the counter without an ID or prescription and work by preventing ovulation or preventing a fertilized egg from attaching to the womb. At least three people were killed and dozens more were injured Monday when an Amtrak passenger train collided with a dump truck at a railroad crossing in Missouri. It happened yesterday, yesterday afternoon. According to the Missouri State Highway Patrol, two people on the train and the driver of the truck that struck the train were killed. At least 50 other people were injured. The train was traveling from Los Angeles heading to Chicago when the incident occurred. The operator of the farm where it happened says he wasn't surprised by the accident. Whenever you cross here with a combine, you have to actually put your steering wheel all the way forward, stand up out of the seat while you're trying to climb that approach and cross, and plus look down the track both ways. The, NT the NTSB is currently investigating the accident. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.